we are going to be talking about another kind of wardrobe and uh, <laughs> so just to reassure us just to reassure just to just to reassure us i want us to go into the theme of this seminar so that uh, we see what we are going to talk about let's open our bibles to ephesians chapter 4 ephesians chapter 4 our theme is taken from uh, ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 uh, ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 says uh, and put on the new nature the regenerate self created in god's image in true righteousness and holiness okay and put on the new nature uh, let's read it in uh, a number of translations let's read it in a number of translations so that we uh, uh, we get a good a good grasp a good grasp of the scripture let me see new living new living translation new living translation uh what does it say ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 uh new living translation you must display a new nature because you are a new person created in god's likeness righteous holy and true okay you see that you must create you must display a new nature on the new man which was created in true righteousness and holiness which other translation do i look at um, maybe the message the message translation the message translation do you have it for me um let's start. the message translation of ephesians <laughs> and working itself into your conduct as god actually reproduces his character in you and working itself into your conduct now one of the things that you see when you look at that scripture is that it's starting with and meaning it's a continuation of something so to be good bible students i would like us to read it uh, to, to get the whole context of the verse that we are looking at okay so i usually teach my students in the bible school that to be a bible student you should always read like five verses before and five verses after to get the full context of what we are looking at so i would like to read to read it from uh, verse uh, 17 okay and i'm going to read it from the amplified bible from verse 17 it says this i say and i solemnly testify in the name of the lord as in his presence that you must no longer live as the heathen the gentiles do in their perverseness in the folly and um, in their folly vanity and emptiness of their souls and the futility of their minds their moral understanding is darkened and their reasoning is beclouded they are alienated from the life of God with no share in it because of the ignorance that is deep-seated in them due to their hardness of heart. 19. In their spiritual apathy, they have become callous and past feeling and reckless and have abandoned themselves a prey to unbridled sensuality eager and greedy to indulge in every form of impurity okay now that is the good context for us 
But the whole point of those three verses from 17 to 19, the scripture is telling us we must no longer live as the heathen because we are no longer heathen. Whosoever is in Christ is a new creation. Behold, all things have passed away and all things have become new. Are we together so far? We should no longer live as the heathen. Why do they live the way they live? Because of their spiritual apathy, because they have hardened heart, they have abandoned themselves to unbridled sensuality, eager and greedy to indulge in every form of impurity. And verse 20 is like the rejoinder, like the what puts everything in perspective. Verse 20 says, but you did not so learn Christ. You did not so learn Christ. Now, that learning Christ is what this whole ministry that we do is about. That's why we are called Christ-like nations international ministries. That's why our vision is to produce a people that are Christ-like in ability, in character, in mission, in purpose. We exist to teach people Christ. Are we together? In these seminars, one of the things that I hope that we can go away with is that we have been taught Christ. Because when you are taught Christ, you receive the ability to do the things that are now going to be mentioned in the in the verses that we are going to read after. Okay? We did not so learn Christ. I read for you a scripture in the morning, the purpose of the apostolic and the other fivefold offices, how we exist to equip the saints and to do the work of ministering towards building up the body and then says that we may grow into full maturity into the character of Christ in Ephesians chapter 4 earlier verses so Paul tells them you did not so learn Christ meaning if you live like the heathen it there is a possibility that you did not learn Christ properly. Because if you have been taught Christ properly, actually it tells them in verse 21 of Ephesians chapter 4, that assuming that you have really heard him and been taught by him, as all truth is in Jesus, then 22, he says, strip yourselves of your former nature. Put off and discard your old self, which characterized your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lusts and desires. Children of God, if you have really undergone a discipleship process, or if you are undergoing a discipleship process, three things should be happening. One is in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. You should be stripping yourself of something. The second thing that should be happening is in verse 23. And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind. Okay? So you should be co you should be in the process of like your mind being renewed. And the third thing is that verse 24 says, and put on the new nature created in God's image. Yes. I'm trying to talk about the theme this afternoon. Are we together so far? Does this make sense? Oh, it's complicated. Whatever. I, I always try to make this as simple as it can come, okay? You did not so learn Christ. And then in verse 21, tells them, assuming that you have really had him and been taught by him. So what, what this is showing me that if you are undergoing a discipleship process or one of the things to show you that you're being discipled wherever you are, 
all that that some discipling is taking place in you is that there should be something that you're stripping yourself of there should be something that you're renewing your mind to and there should be something that you are putting on yes yes three things stripping yourself so if you are growing spiritually if i am growing spiritually i should be taking off something and putting on something and the taking off and putting on should be what should be driving it is a renewal that is taking place in my mind are we together so far and that is where now the concept of the believer's wardrobe comes in if you understand this whole idea of you know you have to you have to put off certain clothes you have to put on certain clothes if you're going for a party you suddenly change from one garment to another if you're going to a funeral you <laughs> change from one garment to another you can't show up at the funeral in a white suit you know you, there, there is always depending on the circumstances and the way your mind is playing out you keep changing dresses and putting on and putting off I, 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 am i making some sense hmm? strip yourself of your former nature so that when believers are having conversations we need to be intentional about these conversations when we meet as believers if we are really serious about accountability to one another as believers when we meet in our home cells and i want this to be implemented in the urcs in your home cells you, you need to start asking yourself tough questions what are you putting off what are you renewing your mind to these days what are you putting on yeah that is the the, the 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 when we talk about the believers wardrobe there should be when when it talks about the stripping off our old nature it means there is an old wardrobe before you were born again before you were a child of god there is a wardrobe you had <laughs> i was reading about it let me read it for you the old wardrobe a little bit ephesians chapter 2 ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1 talks about the old wardrobe the old wardrobe after this seminar you should get concerned if you are a christian but the wardrobe is the old one uh, and you he made alive when you were dead by your trespasses and sins Ephesians 2 verse 1 in which at one time you walked habitually you were following the course and fashion of this world were under the sway of the tenants of this age following the prince of the power of the air you were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that works in the sons of disobedience the careless the rebellious the unbelieving who go against the purposes of god among these verse three you once lived and conducted yourself new job wardrobe you conducted among these we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature obeying the impulses of the flesh and thoughts of the mind our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings we were then by nature children of god's wrath and heirs of his indignation that ladies and gentlemen is a sneak peek into the old wardrobe <sighs> obeying the impulses of the flesh if the flesh says go here you go there if they do this do this eat this eat it say this you say this you are just obeying the impulse of it. so that is the garment that you had on the thought reflected a certain garment the craving reflected a certain garment and those garments made you and i we became 
candidates of God's wrath. Candidates of God's wrath. But verse 4 says, But God so rich is he in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful love which he loved us when we were dead in our sins he made us alive together in fellowship with christ he made us alive i like the part of he gave us the very life of christ himself he gave us the very life of christ now that very life of christ is a new wardrobe all together mm. yes it is the new wardrobe all together with so many garments in there which we are going to try to look at in this week from today up to Friday there are so many garments in there so as a believer every single day you should be looking in this wardrobe called Christ and choosing which garment to put on. When somebody annoys you in the traffic and you're driving to work, you have an opportunity to either choose from the old wardrobe or from the new wardrobe. Can I hear somebody say amen to that? <laughs> Those who have you know, when the boda boda man just suddenly knocks your car <laughs> and knocks the lights off your car, you have an opportunity to choose whether you're going to pick a garment from the old wardrobe and tell him, let me give you a piece of my mind. Don't think that when we got saved, we became farah. Or you can pick from the new wardrobe and show him some kindness or the new wardrobe there is a garment which says each of you should be quick to listen slow to speak and slow to become angry so there is a shirt called slow to speak <laughs> Ooh. there is a dress called slow to become angry you can choose to put it on or you can choose to put on the old garment which has a dress code, let me assure you. Ah. Is this making sense? Are you beginning to understand where we are going with this seminar? <laughs> the believer's wardrobe. If you are growing, if you are, if you are growing, Somebody should look at you and they say, yeah, something has changed about you. There is a way you used to treat people, but you have kind of become a little nice these days. That shows that you are no longer so much using the old wardrobe. You are now using the new wardrobe. Mm. There is this new wardrobe. It says you have you Paul told them you did not so learn Christ. Eh? Let's go back to our Ephesians 4. He told them you did not so learn Christ. It was as if sometimes you need to read the verse and get the sentiment in the verse. Sometimes you need to read the verse and get the, the feeling behind the verse. I can imagine him saying, Ah, aha, you did not so learn Christ. I can imagine him saying, mm -mm. Christ is not like that. Like, he, he hears me talking, and then he's like, mm -mm, you did not so learn Christ. Like, he says, that is not the Christ that you believed. I don't know. I don't know. You did not so learn Christ. Sometimes you need to just pause and tell yourself, hey, hey, you did not so learn Christ. Like in the middle of an argument with your madam, dear husbands, you just say, excuse me, you did not so learn Christ. Like your arm is about to be raised to like slap the image of Christ in front of you. And you tell yourself, excuse me, sir, 
you did not so learn Christ. Like, dear sisters, you are about to tell him how. Uh, <laughs> how how you, he should not think you didn't leave uh, people at home where you can go back to, you know? Before you say that, you tell yourself, excuse me, uh, you did not so learn Christ. We are working with the assumption. Paul said in 421 that assuming that you have really had him and been taught by him. So if you have not had him and been taught by him, it's, it's a pity, but uh, we have an opportunity to learn him this week. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, 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 is this making some sense? The, 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 are, you, are, you, are you getting the theme now? Are you shame? You did not so learn Christ, assuming that you have really had him and been taught by him. Then he says, strip yourselves of your former nature. Strip yourselves, meaning it is you who strips yourself of your former nature. You get the garment and you take it off. Many times we, as Christians, we don't want to take responsibility. We want to blame, ah, my father was not there. <laughs> you know, it's amazing the excuses we create. My father was not there while I was growing up. I was brought up by a single blah, blah, blah. I was whatever. I was, you know, I was, blah, 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 blah. if I had gone to this school. Blah, 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 blah. Mm -mm. When all the excuses are over, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, strip yourself of your former nature. Mm. Recognize that this is of the old wardrobe and take it off and take it off it is a choice we have a class in the bible school we call it the believer and his choices and we say that <laughs> you will grow to the degree of the choices you make whether they are christ-like or devil -like. if you make devil-like choices you'll be devilish if you make christ-like choices you'll be christ-like are we are we are we getting this the old wardrobe the old world. and sometimes you're so much surrounded with the people who have garments of the old wardrobe that they make it look normal to put on the old wardrobe so you try to put on the old wardrobe to fit in the crowd. But it is not normal. It is not normal. It is not normal. It is not normal to tell lies. It is not normal. It is not. Hallelujah. Are we still there? Strip yourselves of your former nature. And 23 says, and be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind. Children of God, to be able to put on the new garment, to be able to put on the new nature, we need to, there is this, have, has your phone ever got a problem and you're trying to set it and they, then they ask you a question that do you want to set it to default settings? Do you want to return to factory settings? Have, have you ever, or you're trying to get your gadget, whatever, and then they ask you, you're fumbling with it, and then they ask you whether you want to go back to factory settings, default settings. Uh -huh. Now, there is a certain default setting. There is, it's called be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You can renew your mind to the truth or speaking the truth that you reach a point where actually Speaking the truth is your default setting. Whether 
treating somebody nice is a default setting so that when you actually act in an unkind manner you feel odd yeah yeah when you tell a lie you feel odd you know i remember those days when we were in the, the medical school and uh, you know they you're doing a, a quick word round the senior comes and they ask you uh, whether you took the temperature and you did not take the temperature and uh, the fear you quickly say yes i did what was it it was 38 and after saying that you feel like you are about to die like what what did i just say then you start repenting under your breath has it ever happened to you you feel bad why do you feel bad because you've done something that is contrary to default settings because you your mind had been renewed to the speaking the truth in love mode your mind had been renewed to speak the truth to one another and then now you tell a lie and it is now foreign to your system uh -huh. mm. yeah 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 so it, it is the bible says be constantly be constantly be be when it says be it's also saying it's a choice you can choose to be renewed in the spirit of the spirit of your mind it is talking about the, the world has come up with impressive terms for this uh, uh biblical worldview of a something worldview, blah 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 blah. They, they, they are in impressive ways to say it, but it is the spirit of your mind, the general direction of your thoughts, the general flow of your thinking. If the general flow of your thinking has been renewed to Christ, you will discern falsehood from very far. You will discern evil from very far you will discern lust from very far i tell you the truth if you have renewed your mind to a humble disposition you know it immediately you start walking in pride you know it if you have put on a garment of humility you will know it you will know it because you are going against the default setting Be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind mm. so that I need to be reading my Bible intentionally. I need to be listening to the word intentionally. I need to be studying Christian literature intentionally because I am trying to renew the spirit of my mind i'm trying to change the way i think mm. because how i think is going to eventually determine who i am because as a man thinketh so is he mm. okay okay so uh, you know i am i am picky with what i read i am picky with who i listen to are you getting me? I am picky with the com with the company that I keep. Uh, I, I I am picky with the news that I choose to spend a one hour, two hours, three hours watching. I am picky with the conversations I have. I am picky with the books that I read. I am picky with the so-called philosophers that I like to listen to. I am picky with the because I know. Whatever I watch, whatever I listen to, oh, over a long period of time is determining the spirit of my mind. Mm. Mm -hmm. So when I choose to be constantly renewed in the spirit of my mind, I, I, I need to get what the scriptures say about finances, what 
people have written on finances based on the scriptures and I renew my mind to that. I look for what the scriptures say about prayer, what the scriptures say about marriage, okay? So if I have the, if my spirit, the spirit of my mind has been renewed as far as marriage is concerned, I do not have divorce as an option. I don't even think about it. You get because God hates it. Period. So uh, the spirit of the default setting is that they don't divorce. So I don't get married with that in mind. I have renewed my mind to that. I am intentional. I, I am intentional. Is somebody getting this? So when you are when you have been taught Christ, or when you are being taught Christ, there has to be those three things. I am stripping off something from the old garment. I am renewing my mind to default settings. I am putting on something that I have discovered is in the default settings. I am putting on something new. Yeah. So when you meet as Christians, if you if you meet a brother a sister and this is your real sister in the lord and you see something that they are doing and it is old wardrobe if you love them put the pull them aside and tell them but but brother the way you're treating madame is old wardrobe and remember it was 96 when the two of us gave our lives to christ unless for you you came off the the thing but me we are still in this together so in Christ they don't treat wives like this, you know. If you if you uh, attend a function and uh, you see a sister taking some wine, uh, put them aside and tell them uh, which default settings are those ones. You know, the last time I read, they were saying, "Do not be drunk with wine that leads to debauchery," uh, but. Uh, be drunk in the Holy Spirit. So did you choose wine over the Holy Spirit? Default setting is be drunk with the Holy Spirit. Have you decided that it is better to be drunk with wine than to be drunk with the Spirit? And then they will tell you, oh, it is just for my, my digestion. Then you ask them, what's wrong with your digestion? Believers shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. I can lay hands on you and your digestion recovers. You don't need wine to recover from your digestion. Ah, who? Rabosh talarara.